All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Discover the Wild with the Territory Wildlife Park. My name's Mark, I'm one of the acronyms here at the Wildlife Park, and today I'm going to be showing you a bit of what we have in our top end waterways. Now, first one that we're going to dive straight into and talk about is our barramundi. Now, I'm feeding him some whiting today, as well as some mullet and some scab, and what I'm getting him to do is called buffing. Now it sounds like a weird name, but what's happening here is the barramundi is opening his mouth as wide as it can and as fast as it can to cause a big vacuum to suck in their prey items. Now thankfully, thankfully for myself, I don't have to worry about losing any fingers whilst doing this. Barramundi don't have any teeth whatsoever, just very rough gums, so kind of like sandpaper. Now barramundi can eat anywhere up to about 60% of their body length all in one go and they're opportunistic feeders which means they pretty much eat anything that they can fit into their mouth and they're nice and hungry today they're doing a great job feeding for us but i think after a few more books we'll move on to another very cool fish and one of my favorites here in the sandbar now, i'm guessing everybody knows exactly why they're called archer fish you can find these guys at Berry Springs, and the reason why they get called archerfish is because they spit for their food. Now hopefully we have some luck today. It looks like one's lining up. Perfect. Now the reason why they do this is because when there's a shortage of food in the water, they're going to be looking to the trees. So they're going to be spitting for things such as fruits and berries, insects, and small reptiles. Now a cool fact is that these guys don't, oh, only about 40% of the time, they get to eat what they spit off. As you can see, they're hanging around with a few archer fish. One of them does all the hard work of spitting it off, and then someone else will come in and steal his food. Here though, we're a little bit nicer at the wildlife park. We try to make sure that the person, or the fish I should say, who spits, gets a nice tasty meal. Now, I might be lucky enough to see another behavior from these guys. If it's close enough to the water, they also jump out just like that for their food. It's a very, very cool fish. Now, they know how to do this from when they hatch out of the egg. We didn't have to teach them how to do any of this here at the wildlife park. But when they're younger, they have terrible aim. What they have to do is pair up with older archfish, see how they aim and spit for their food as well as through trial and error, so they get to spot on how they are today. Now they are pretty much 100% accurate up to about a metre, a metre and a half, and the way they spit is they stick their snout out of the water, push their tongue against the roof of their mouth, and this causes like a rifle barrel, and then they'll snap their gill covers shut, which shoots a powerful stream of water that can go anywhere up to about two to four metres. Now they all have their own individual personalities, they're all a little bit cheeky. Some of them, instead of spitting for their food, they aim for our eyes whenever we come in to feed them. But we all do love them here at the park. Now if I can get one more, that would be great. No, it looks like everybody's lost interest. Well, how about we dive straight into feeding the stars of our show? Here's the stars of our show. So this is Big Geraldine and she's one of three of our Australian freshwater whip rays. Now I'm not too sure if any of you know that we actually have a freshwater rays here in Australia, but this is our only species of freshwater ray. Now they were scientifically discovered in 1989 in the Daly River and described as their own species in 2008. So we're still learning quite a lot about them. And that's because where they live, of course, there is a lot of crocodiles. And not many people want to go scuba diving when there's crocodiles around. Now, what these guys are displaying here today is a completely natural behavior that you may be lucky enough to see in the wild. So what they do is they drive their prey, such as fish, towards the shallow. Once they get to the shallows, those fish are trapped, they have nowhere to go. They turn around and swim straight underneath our rays 
and our rays trap them under that large dislike body and suck them up just like a big vacuum cleaner. Now their eyes are on top of their head and their mouth is underneath, so they're not relying on those eyes to find their food. What they're relying on is electrosensors that cover the underside of their body. And what they do is pick up any electrical signal that our body gives off. So that's how they find their food, not relying on their eyesight, relying solely on those electrosensors. Now I want to teach you guys a word today, and that, the word, that word is elasmobranchs. Now elasmobranchs are sharks, skates, rays, and sawfish. So that's what family they're in. And their skin is all very, very similar. So it's made out of denticles, which is little dots all over their body. And these denticles make them feel exactly like sandpaper. So you can see here, up close and personal, all those little bumps, all those little denticles that cover their body. As I said before, they feel exactly like sandpaper. So very, very cool stuff. But underneath, they're quite soft, and some people might even describe it as quite slimy. Now, these guys, they have a barb that sits at the base of their tail. Now, that's what separates them from stingrays. So, as I mentioned before, these guys are called whip rays. They have that long whip-like tail, and that barb sits at the base, whereas a stingray they have their barb about two-thirds of the way down that tail. Now these guys here at the wildlife park, the best way that I can describe them is they are big, wet puppy dogs. They all have their own personality, but they all have one thing in common. They are bottomless pits. These guys can eat and eat and eat just like a Labrador. They're very, very gentle creatures, very, very curious at the same time. And as you can see, they always enjoy lunchtime. And you can see some water spitting out of those two holes behind their eyes. They're called spiracles. That's the ray's own inbuilt filtration system. Anything that they don't want to eat, they spit straight out of those two holes. So you'll see water, you'll see some sand spitting out of there. That's everything that they don't want to ingest. And you can see why Geraldine's the biggest here at the wildlife park because she always sticks around for the most food. So before we go, I just want to talk a little bit about the raised barb. So as I said, it sits at the base of its tail and this is what it looks like. Now this barb fell off one of the raised tails. They do fall off naturally. And what it's normally covered in is a brownish skin. Now this brownish skin also has a venomous mucus on it. Now this venomous mucus, what it's designed to do is put you in an extreme amount of pain. And it's for their predators, things such as bull sharks, as well as saltwater crocodiles, find these guys a tasty meal. So this is how they defend themselves using this barb. Now, if you do ever get barbed by a ray, hot water, which is what I have in here, is the perfect first aid because if you introduce protein to heat it breaks apart so introducing hot water to a protein based venom should neutralize that venom now in order to make sure you don't run into a bad situation with rays the best advice that i can give you is that when you are in a waterway where you think there might be rays around don't take big steps in the water just shuffle your feet along the bottom and that will let the ray know that you're there and they will get straight out of your way now they don't want to use that barb on us. They are very, very shy and prefer to keep out of our way. And what they want to use it for is only their predators. So as I mentioned before, bull sharks and crocodiles. Now guys, I hope you learned a little bit today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stick around next time for Discover the Wild at the Territory Wildlife Park. Thanks a lot.